Good morning, everyone. My name is Nilvio Perez. I'm the Director of Admission here at Albertus Magnus College. We'd like to welcome you to our campus as we celebrate the achievements of the top 50 juniors in New Haven. This, this is our sixth annual Top 50, and we began the program because reading the newspapers and listening to some of the local media, New Haven had, had a, um, a stigma that it wasn't a city that had bright students in it. And we felt that that was inaccurate. Albertus has been here since 1925, and we are a proud member of this community. Working with the guidance counselors at the 10 schools in New Haven, I've had the privilege of meeting some of those bright stars as they look for colleges to attend. And I am honored to be up here to talk with you today about what you've done, but more importantly, what you're gonna do. Just to give you a little bit of uh, an of idea of where the top 50 juniors have gone, we currently have top 50s at Yale University, Fairfield University, the University of Indiana, University of Connecticut, Albertus Magnus College, Columbia University, Quinnipiac University, the University of New Haven, Southern Connecticut State University, Northeastern University, and Boston College. And almost each of those students have received a scholarship. Let's give them a round of applause. I would like to thank Dr. Julia McNamara, our president, for being here today, along with members of our administrative council. I'd also like to thank the guidance counselors who show a lot of patience working with me in putting this program together. And most importantly, I'd like to recognize the parents and family members and guests who have inspired the top 50. Continue doing that great work because we need our young people to be inspirational. At this time, I'd like to introduce our president, Dr. Julia McNamara, who would like to welcome you. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a pleasure. I was up in my office just a few minutes ago, and I was uh, saying to some folks uh, in the reception lobby, I'm going down to celebrate the top 50 juniors in New Haven, and so, uh, Greater New Haven today, and they were so excited about the possibility of once again having this lovely ceremony where we celebrate folks who have not quite finished with their secondary school experience, but folks who, top 50 juniors, who have made it their business over their first three years of secondary school to do extremely well so that your grade point averages today are what they are because you have put a lot of your energy and, and enthusiasm for study into the academic work that is secondary school. We say to the top 50 juniors, and I know many of your family members are here today, and I know the guidance counselors and some faculty members from the, your high schools are here today, and guess what? They want you, top 50 juniors, to continue the work that you have begun so well and to complete your high school experience and in a thoughtful and very positive way so that you too will become part of the list that Neil Vio just read from people going to some wonderful colleges and taking advantage of the secondary school experience that you have had because, guess what? Secondary school, high school, is the most important platform for not just getting into college, but doing college well. We celebrate top 50 juniors because we say you have done, you are so far, you've done high school very, very well but you have to complete that platform in your senior year. We don't want any one of the top 50 juniors to be people who have senioritis next year. We want you all to be, to be students to the very end, to take some of the more difficult academic courses so that when you do start college, and the assumption here is that everyone is going on to a college or a university where you will also do well and you will never rest on your laurels. You know, the people who founded Albertus Magnus College back in 1925, as Nilvio reminded me when he was speaking, they were people, the Dominican sisters, uh, the Dominican sisters wanted very much for the students who attended their college to have every opportunity. And we continue that tradition 
here today at Albertus Magnus, where we say that there is this, a, a wonderful chance for people who come to college to really complete their, their, their vision of themselves and to think about what their next career possibilities are. So we at Albertus have this mission. You know, everybody has a mission in life, something you reach for, a goal, something you want to do or achieve. And we say that the mission here at Albertus is to search for truth in all its dimensions, lofty and beautiful and noble ideal. But we also say that we want you all to have an education that is practical in its application too. So think about that. An education that on the one hand enables you to search for truth, to think about life, to think about yourselves, your families, your futures, but also to get on that practical side and think about the practical aspects of education, which will enable you to become great citizens in our society. We are so proud of you as top 50 juniors because we also recognize you don't get to be a top 50 junior unless you're also giving something back to the community. And that's a very important part of what this program is all about. I am delighted to welcome you here to our school today and to say top 50 juniors, go for it. Do the very best you can at the end of this year. It's coming to a quick quick conclusion, and then as you become seniors and think about the schools that you wish to attend, think also about that secondary school platform that's going to take you far when you get to college. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. McNamara. At this point, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker, and for the first time in, in our program's history, we have a former top 50 junior. Uh, Kara Ann Kama graduated from the Sound School, and she was a top 50 oh, around the Sound School. And she was a top 50 in 2008. Uh, she amazingly will be completing her degree here in just three years. She'll be walking in the commencement ceremonies this Sunday. Kara will be um, earning a degree in biology, minoring in communications. She's graduating summa cum laude. She was a residential assistant here. She participated in a bunch of different activities as well. But more importantly, she plans to pursue a medical doctorate to specialize in neurosurgery and surgical oncology. She also holds the title of Miss New Haven County and this June will be competing for the title of Miss Connecticut. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Miss Kara Ann Campbell. Welcome, everyone. I want to start out by saying thank you to the admissions office and specifically Nilvio Perez for allowing me to come and speak to you all today. I remember when I was a top 50 junior and I was starting to apply for colleges and then I was accepted to Albertus Magnus College, the first thing I said to Nilvio was, when I'm an alumnus, I want to come and speak to your top 50 juniors. So I'm so excited to be here today and I'm so honored to speak to you all because I was once in your shoes as well. I started out at the Sound School as a freshman. Um, all four years I was a New Haven student. I was given opportunities that are unmatched and many other students in Connecticut don't have the opportunity to take advantage of these from the advantages of being close to Yale University and all of the programs that they offer. I was involved in many college preparatory programs such as the Evolutions Program, um, Minorities in Medicine Movement, so many different opportunities and advantages were offered at my disposal. And you guys are so lucky and you need to realize that, that it's a blessing that you all were given these advantages by being a New Haven student. And that really inspired me to go to Albert Magnus College because I knew I wanted to be in this community further. I knew I wanted to stay in New Haven, New Haven County because I was offered these advantages. And I wanted to speak to people and to tell everyone about these opportunities. The four points on the Miss America crown, I don't have my crown on today, but um, there are four points on it. And each represents style, scholarship, service, and success. And each of you, each, 50, each single student of you, one of 50, represent these qualities. You all possess style, scholarship, service, and success because you're sitting here today. And so I want to say congratulations to you all because this is an amazing opportunity and you need to realize that. So I want to encourage you all, I'm going to end my speech, I could talk for hours, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I want to tell you all that it's so important to leave no stone unturned. So take advantage of everything. Your college experience goes by so fast. Mine went by in three years, and now I'm saying, why did I do that? <laughs> I loved it. I had so many different things that I could take advantage of, from being a resident assistant to the science club. But I want to encourage you all to do one more thing. And my personal platform, or my issue of concern in the society as Miss New Haven County, is to encourage others to pursue a mentor. I had many mentors in the sciences and in everyday life that encouraged me to pursue educational advancement, and I encourage you all to do the same. It is so important to find someone to, in a non-judgmental position, someone that you can confide in and talk to, someone to inspire you and for someone to emulate, because they will, they're the people who are going to get you further in life. So tomorrow or tonight, when you go back to your car, when you're at home, I encourage you all to take the time to sit down and say, what is your goal today? What do you want to do tomorrow? What is your ultimate destiny? and write down three defined ways that you can achieve it. And then put it in the spot where you wake up, next to your bed, on your desk, somewhere that you will always see those goals and be reminded of them and how you can achieve them. And three years later, four years later, you'll see, okay, I did this, I achieved those goals. And you'll be so proud and so, so amazed at the successes that you have achieved. So take full advantage of every and all opportunities and congratulations to all of the New Haven students today. Thank you so much. Sarah. I think she'll make a, a wonderful Miss Connecticut, don't you think? Yeah. So, as, as I mentioned earlier, this Sunday is our commencement ceremony, so we are in, in full celebration mode. And at this time, we will be announcing the names individually of the top 50 juniors who are present. And we encourage you to celebrate. You know, we, we enjoy applauding, and, and we encourage you to come up with your camera, take a photo, and um, this is your time top 50 in your family. This, this is your time. So we'll respect that. I will ask Kara and Dr. McNamara to please assist me with handing the awards out. And we will begin with the top 50 students from Cooperative Arts and Humanities High School. Aaron O'Malley. Mary Sanchez. <laughs> Justin Pittman. Ariel Estes. <laughs> the top 50 students from high school in the community. Leah Loricchio. Solange Ganaz. <laughs> Chastity Barros Hernandez. Gabriel Diorecto. <laughs> the top 50 from Hill Regional Career. Christopher Wagner. Francis Majoro. <laughs> Top 
50 from Hyde Leadership. Devante Seeley. Brandis Neal. Samantha Rosa. Top 50 from James Hill House High School. Giandra Harvey. Remy Gardner. Dayasha Dozier. Benazir Sati. <laughs> Adriana Vassal. Trayvon Perry. <laughs> Teresia Brown. Naja Brown. And they, they're twins, yes. <laughs> Top 50 juniors from Metropolitan Business Academy. Tyshell Forbes.
Michelle Zing. Joshua Singh. <laughs> Top 50 juniors from Riverside Educational Academy. <laughs> Gabriel Santiago. Nikea Wilder. <laughs> the, the top fifty from the sound school. Maria Sila. Samantha Peters. The top 50 juniors from Wilbur Cross High School. <clears throat> Maya Levine Ritterman. <clears throat> Zachary Kirshner. And those are the top 50 juniors of 2012. Before we conclude, I just want to leave you with a few thoughts. In, in November of 2011, I had the privilege of meeting Wes Moore. Thank you, maybe because we had this conversation before, right? And Wes Moore wrote a book called The Other Wes Moore. And the book revolves around two men with the same name, who lived in the same neighborhood, who had two very different futures ahead of them. In December of 2000, the Baltimore Sun ran a small piece about a local boy who had just received this Rhodes Scholarship. His name was Wes Moore. The same paper ran a series of articles about four young men who allegedly killed an off-duty police officer during a botched armed robbery. The police were still looking for two suspects, one of them named Wes Moore. One Wes Moore was graduating from John Hopkins University and heading off to Oxford University as a Rhodes Scholar. The other Wes was about to be convicted for life in prison for murder. Same name, same neighborhood, same paper on the same date. Wes thought this was too much of a coincidence. He decided to write to the other Wes asking two basic questions. Who are you, and how did this happen? Wes didn't know what to expect after he sent the letter. A few weeks went by, and then he received the most surprising letter he's ever received. See, in the back of his head, the way he tells it, he was expecting a, a very poor written letter, or profanity written letter. He says that he thought maybe this person left school early and just kind of got caught up in the wrong crowd and didn't care about education. What he received was a very well-written letter, very concise and to the point. After exchanging a series of letters, he decided to meet Wes in prison. When they met, 
the conversation changed Westmore's life. On the drive home, the reality finally hit him. He could have been behind those bars. There was a few decisions that changed their outcomes. Both men grew up in Baltimore, a few, a few blocks away from each other. They were a, half, a year and a half apart. They were both raised by single mothers with multiple children. They both acted out in elementary school. They had a lot in common. One thing that one West had that the other didn't were people who challenged him, who supported him, and who held him accountable. The other West had a mother who had two jobs, who dropped out of college to provide for her family, and there were no male figures in, in the household. He was labeled, and people gave up on him. The awards you top 50 students hold today, it is a recognition of your achievements, but it's also a reminder to find the Westmore in your community. Find that person and challenge them. Support them and hold them accountable. You are New Haven's leaders, and we are counting on you. Thank you very much.